What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to your daily creative reading for September 8th. We are going to hop right on in. Let's do this. Let's see what the cards have to say for the day. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives, please? Messages from my daily creatives. Whoa. Okay, so quite a few. Um, <laughs> but we'll take the ones that fell out. Oh, there's three. Okay, so do you want... Okay. Okay, I'm shuffling them all again. Okay. Got it. Got it, got it. All right, so hidden treasure and then right underneath it says celebrate life you can't really see it. it's very faint okay and then this one says celebrate life so it's almost like these are really connected wow okay dearest you since you're on earth you understand how buildings are built yes a good solid foundation and yet flexibility too in the case of earthquakes Truth be told, you can't offer something sustainable unless it's built from a solid base, whether it be an idea that takes from one form one step at a time or an actual house that needs a sturdy foundation dug, poured, and built. We want to remind you of this because you might need a little encouragement to see this is true in your life at this time. Celebrate the fact that right now you can repair the cracks in the foundation of your life effortlessly as well as do a general sight check to ensure your hard work is being well supported. Do this and know you are building your life on a perfect and solid foundation that will allow you to welcome the many miracles waiting to come visit. We're so happy for you and so intrigued by what you're building. I quite like that. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives to kick off September 8th, please? Messages for September 8th. Ten of Pentacles. That's one hell of a call. <laughs> You know what's so interesting here? It's almost like um, I this is coming across as, so we have the Ten of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups, and the Six of Swords. Now, part of this, part of the call in the hero's journey is the refusal as well, right? The, the call and then being like, oh, hell no. Um, I think part of this here is understanding the ways that you kind of, it's almost like you moved away from happiness. Like the refusal is like, Wah. there's almost like this lack of trust um, in happiness where it's like this could have been this energy this six of swords where it's like there was something you didn't trust about it this is coming out a bit this week I, I'm not quite sure why but um, the this aspect of like trust the six of swords is like moving away but it's also like leaving a place with just a bag packed like it doesn't strike me as like a journey that you're particularly excited about this is it strikes me as like um, an energy of having to leave somewhere with just the clothes on your back kind of thing not something that's planned or anything like that and maybe the planning and things were often like you couldn't trust them like it's almost like your back is a bit turned on this happiness yeah like your back is turned on happiness you know three 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 on the time your back is turned we're gonna dig into that if the call to adventure is opening up that's really what i'm feeling here the call to adventure is opening up. So the king of swords could become a tower if it goes unchecked. I feel like this is being a little bit cold, feeling like you know everything, um, you know, and you just don't, right? Because the thing is that pain that we don't want to repeat, it can often make us feel like we know everything. It can often make us feel like we we know more than what we what we think and and it's like turning your back on all of these beautiful energies in a way six of wands is your protagonist energy right like in a way there's like something about being seen specifically with this leo energy here and maybe it's just being seen for where you are maybe it's just being seen for let me move the mic here maybe it's just being seen for some of the the challenges that you're facing or you know and sometimes we don't need people to to see us such that we stay there but sometimes we just need people to see us there so that it diffuses any shame we might feel about where we are right that can be a very real thing um 444 on the time and i feel like this is a lot about 
the way that you're doing that. You're, it's like there's something that you may not have wanted to be seen, but the reality is the antagonist position here is the strength card, which tells me that you are kind of battling yourself where it didn't need to be the case. And it kind of left you feeling a lot of like this lack of confidence, not in, I mean, yes, in your abilities, yes, in your skills, yes, in your knowledge, all of that is true. But I'm also feeling that this left you a little bit like doubting your capacity to handle this, right? Like doubting whether you were not capable, because I think the six of wands is here. This is previous successes. So you know that you're capable, but it's almost like feeling like you had to like there's, it's almost like this king of wands, it's a it, uh, king of wands, good Lord, king of swords. It's making me feel like there's like a maintenance, like there needed to be some kind of maintenance, um, to, to stay in that energy because there's something that's like more playful. I'm getting this, you know, especially with the strength card here. So it could be, this is an aspect of yourself that you weren't seeing that you weren't letting be seen five, five, five on the time. And that does feel like a change that needs to happen. That's like a shift, um, I feel like that's a, a big change that needs to happen where it's like there was something you're not trusting about yourself. Page of Pentacles. Yeah. Youthful energy. The challenge is is valuing this, is valuing maybe, you know, when we think about things that we want, sometimes we're like, that's stupid. But I mean, if you're judging yourself, like, why do I want this? But sometimes it's not that it doesn't need to have that judgment with it. Right. Um, you know, I think about when I was... Um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example and I'm blanking. Um, but it's just, you know, for example, uh, when I go on hikes, sometimes I like to listen to music because it helps to connect me and it helps to also tone down the synesthesia that I experience in nature. So for me, it, it kind of does two things. When I used to take buses everywhere, for example, um, and when I took, I should say I took public transit more than I drove, right? Because I didn't have a car at the time. And some people who would take buses with me would sometimes get annoyed that I'd have a headphone in um, one ear, but it was really because it was helping to manage uh, overwhelm that I would feel at everyone's energies on the bus and, and also just everyone on the bus and sometimes the noise of it, it was like just being extra sensitive to that. Um, so I almost feel like there's like, it's stuff like that where like people can talk you out of it and be like, why do you have one headphone? And that's rude. And it's like, no, it's not. It's, it's what you need to support yourself. But there's also this playfulness that's coming through, right? There's the removing the practicality. That's where it's like examples are failing me, but it's like, this is like wanting to have an adult coloring book. So getting an adult coloring book and doing that. Right. This is wanting to walk around, you know, go for a hike in the rain. I've been wanting to do that for a while <laughs> and I just haven't gotten the chance when it's raining. Right. So something that seems frivolous that you're like, why would that? What? But it's like those things, just letting yourself want them. And I feel like that sort of becomes a gateway for expressing deeper truths. Yeah, it's like a gateway for expressing deeper truths that you might have been denying yourself. Um, because you were like, I have to be in this King of Swords energy. <laughs> and like, you know, when, and it's not even image upholding. It's not about that. It's almost like this was a truth or a part of you that helped you survive up to this point. But like, it's okay to come down from the mountain. Like it's, it's cool to, to do that. You don't have to, you don't need to fear that so much. Yeah. You don't have to fear that. Oh my goodness. This is hilarious right? Like judgment and the eight of swords. You don't have to fear that because it's just like, it's more reflection than truth. Nine of pentacles, clarifying the page of pentacles. Yeah. I feel like this is really going to enhance something for you. Queen of swords and the sun. It's like, I feel like this is the awakening is awakening to this part of you. You know, after the challenge, I feel like the overcoming of this, this needing to integrate a more youthful perspective or, and, you know, just like childlike wonder, you like, how the heck does that happen? Putting yourself in situations and in places that will make you ask, how is it possible for it to look this way or be this way? And to, to stoke that sense of wonder, because then it kind of becomes a way of seeing the world through the eyes of a child where that helps you. It helps to ground you in so much more because then you also have a way of seeing yourself through the same eyes, seeing challenges through the same eyes, see, seeing all of these things with this sense of curiosity, this, this sort of curiosity that helps you to get past challenges, right? And it's almost like the King of Swords here is like looking, the King of Swords is pointed 
at this nine of pentacles, almost like it doesn't trust, it doesn't trust the energy, right? So it's almost like that's where this could become a tower is if you lead from a place of king of swords, you really have to lead from a place of cups because that's what makes your, your 10 of pentacles accessible to you, right? That's what opens things up. And, you know, there's the king of swords leadership is great, but I feel like there needs to be a sensitivity to it too. 10, 10 was just on the time. Um, because I think the King of Swords can get pretty isolated up there, right? It can get pretty lonely. Um, and, you know, the awakening, what you're awakening to through this journey, through the journey, through this energy is a bit of your happiness. And there's like, you're, I think you're seeing, what I find interesting about this is like, you're seeing, again, your back is turned, but I feel like there's a clarity that you're gaining. Very interesting that we have the King and Queen of Swords coming out. Um, I almost feel like this is like cycling down and out of the Swords energy that you kind of built up to, at this, uh, I think, earlier this week. So it's like, your back might have been turned on your happiness, but I feel like you're seeing that. I feel like you're 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 regarding the way that that happened and the way that you're I don't want to say the discounted, but I almost see like the queen of swords as being like that super sarcastic friend that says things that makes everyone laugh. But what they don't realize is that they also, by saying those things are revealing the way that they've placed themselves on a mountaintop, inaccessible to any kind of love, affection, uh, you know, a devotion in terms of the way people cherish you in friendships and relationships, right? Heart locked away. So it's like this dry, sarcastic humor that can reveal that. And I feel like there's a moving through that and out of it, two of cups on the bottom. Yeah, it's like this awakening to something much bigger and, and rooted in connection. And, you know, we need people, we need one another, not just when things are hard, but like, it's, it's nice to connect, right? I have a lot of need to recharge my batteries alone like I get peopled out very quickly but there's still like you still need one another queen of cups look at that beautiful integrating your emotions that's kind of the main lesson here the main lesson is that fire and water can coexist <laughs> this is hilarious okay so the queen of cups came out and then it was the ace of wands and then the two of pentacles so what this told me was that your fire and your water can exist simultaneously one will not negate the other and opportunities that require your passion your creativity need this depth of emotion and, and it's like an emotional awareness not just being able to name your emotions but why do you feel that way why do you do what you do emotionally speaking right and not over analyzing it and picking yourself apart, but just looking at your habits and saying, oh, okay, I know that I respond in this way and this can mean dysregulation, but this is the root of the pattern and it's not great. And, you know, just kind of looking at it through the eyes of compassion and saying, man, I'm doing so good though. I'm trying. I am definitely trying my best and I'm starting to see results and I know that more will come. So I'm not going to judge myself because we're all doing our best, aren't we? We're all trying with everything that we have. And if we aren't, there are reasons for that. The ones that I have to concern myself with are the ones related to me. So do I know that I'm doing my best? Well, I know that I'm doing my best because it feels that way. And, you know, you, and saying to yourself, right, you know, you, so if I was saying, Charlie, you're doing amazing, you're doing great. Don't worry, everything's working out as it should be. Just take a breather, right? It's like pulling yourself out of that. It's almost like this, like, again, I think about this, the Queen of Swords as being that like super witty, sarcastic, biting friend. But then it's like how much of your happiness is accessible to you in that place? Like people may really, you know, enjoy spending time with you because you're funny, but do you disconnect your innocence from yourself in order to maintain that sharp, witty, and I don't want to say persona because it doesn't feel that big, but it's just like in order to, to, to maintain that way that you've been, this is kind of ego related, right? Like who you are versus who you really are. Um, and, and are you disconnecting a part of your innocence from that? Because the sarcasm is what makes it so that you can keep emotions kind of at a distance because when you invest in that either too quickly or whatnot it kind of becomes something that you've almost refused like it's it's like the call is is <laughs> ten of pentacles ace of cups like that's a relationship or friendship or just connecting to something that means a lot to you that's bigger than you And sarcasm is can be funny, but I've also experienced it where sarcasm is kind of like a passive aggressive expression of something we're not willing to talk about or deal with. 
outside of the the frame of just kidding so then it becomes a way that we we hide these things that need to change or we hide these complaints that need to really be feedback to other people so then it becomes a way where we don't have to change anything and we still get you know all this applause yay you're so funny you know all these things and we are funny a lot of the time people are hilarious but it's like at what price you know, and, and this is just one, I don't know why it's coming through this way in terms of the queen of swords on that energy, but it's just something to think about. Right. Um, and I've often thought that, and like, as I get older, um, I just keep like sarcasm feels less and less amazing to me just because, um, a being on the far end of the autism spectrum, sometimes I miss the point <laughs> and I take it literally. So then people are like, why do you need reassurance? And it's like, well, because sarcasm tends to like, it, it, it when it comes to interpersonal relationships um it, it can become kind of a weapon and a way that we communicate something we're not intending to so i think it's just it, it my, my tolerance for it has decreased um i mean in in joking ways like my granny will call and i'll you know talk about bringing your greeting she's like oh we don't have those out here i don't know why you're getting it there and that's different right but it's like the way that it's used um, almost like in this lion way, right? Like we're growling and showing our teeth, but doing it with a smile. And it's almost like that's where this, like it can become an antagonist energy. And that's part of authenticity. Yeah, that's <laughs> seven of swords just came flying out. That can become an antagonist energy because it's like you're being dishonest and hiding hiding where you are and what you need with humor. And, and you know, that's, you can if you want to, but it's like being honest with yourself. I don't know why this is so damn loud today. Magician came out here. It's like I'm hearing imagination. Like you have to imagine, not just like imagining a world differently because that's not it. That's that's not just it. It's like you have to sometimes imagine what it would feel like to not need to relate through, you know, these little mechanisms that we use. I don't know why sarcasm is so damn loud. I'm almost like I'm low key pissing myself off with how loud this is. But I think about how often we do it, you know, like coming into work and people will say, how are you doing? And it's like, oh, you know, live in the dream. <laughs> right. And it's like people laugh because they're like, I know. Right. But, you know, what what if you came into work and people ask how you were doing? You're like, I am great. Did you see the sunshine out there today? It looks beautiful. Even if it's cloudy. Did you see the rain? Oh, boy, did we need it. Um, you know, and, and it's like understanding that when we rely on these mechanisms to just get through the day, that tells you that the foundation of your day needs to change in some way, shape or form. So instead of just being in that energy and being like, Bleh, and then turning to things like coffee with a lot of sugar in it or I use a sweetener. It's a stevia extract, um, but it, and it's brilliant. Uh, it's just a tiny, tiny bit. But nonetheless, like we turn to like carbs and we start to crave things like that um, because our and even fatty foods. I found that when I'm in environments that leave me feeling really ungrounded and outside myself, which I have to take responsibility for, I'll start to crave really high fat foods. Like nothing sounds as delicious and delightful as a Big Mac in those moments, even though it's not great for you and it hurts your stomach, right? Like it's not good. Um, and it also hurts your insides too, but it's like in those moments, it's like you need something to ground yourself, right? So it's like turning, it's, it's like turning away from all these coping mechanisms and going right to the root cause. And I feel like that's kind of what this contemplative energy is here in the King and Queen of Swords here. Cause I feel like you're beginning to see that what's required of you on this new step that you're taking or new place that you're moving into a uh, place that you're interesting i'm thinking about like a new phase a new cycle a new um you know once we're out of the retrograde period you can start new during the retrograde though it's not i mean people wouldn't necessarily recommend it but it's really just about understanding that the retrograde is a time for us to really be understanding of our own bs before we sign up for something new because you know mercury retrogrades can often confuse us and cross communication lines all of that stuff but there's something that is slightly different that is required for this next step. 
And I, I think it, it has a lot to do with being more in, t- in touch with and in tune with your emotions. You don't have to share them with everybody. But like if you've been in a place of feeling like you're constantly balancing this like invisible knapsack of BS and, and negativity, you need to let it go, right? Because then it becomes an ace of pentacles, which is another new start. That's the ability to plant a new seed. And I think it's like you have to let go of whatever it is. That could be just a balancing act that you've been doing, right? Um, it's almost like you juggle your happiness and you're like, Hey, wait, why can't I stop juggling? But it's like, you have to decide that you want to, you have to be willing to stop doing it. Um, and from the, <laughs> so the six of pentacles is on the 10 of pentacles, the page of pentacles, the nine of pentacles. So this may relate to work for some folks. Um, uh, but I think it also, again, we're talking foundation and I feel like this is foundation building, right? It's almost like, this is accepting that you don't necessarily know everything and it's bringing something back into balance, right? The nine of pentacles is your perception of yourself. I mean, it's not thoughts, but I almost feel like this is like, how accessible do you believe your skills are to you? Do you know things? Then you're just like, I don't know what to do with this. I have no clue, right? But there's something about this youthful energy and it could be a way that you give to others um, through it, Um You know, if you're like the funny friend or if you're like the, I don't know if we play roles like that in friendships, but um, if you're like the, the, the joker, like the class clown or whatever, right? Like if you're in that energy, it could be a call to really balance yourself um, and to really understand what it is about that youthful energy that you, that, that you, I guess, embody, right? What is it about it that you embody well? And, and how does it serve you and serve others? This is kind of that exchange, right? Because this is really, it's supposed to be the charitable giving card, but it's, I think to me, it comes across as, as an energy of exchange because as you receive, so too do you give. Um, and it could be this way that, um, this sort of, playfulness is bringing about curious new opportunities for you um just like new opportunities that resonate really deeply in the heart space Uh, i feel like the king of swords there's so much to be said for how much of a gift that was for you because i think that it protected you from some things that you really needed protecting from um but i think it's safe to let go it's like it's safe to let go of it and i think you have to know that it's safe you have to trust that it's safe uh, to let go. Queen of Pentacles clarifying the Five of Pentacles. A lot of pentacle energy today. Um, and it's almost like this is like the healing. This is possibly healing some kind of trauma. This is possibly, you know, it's healing in general. Um, further to the point of the Nine of Pentacles and the Magician, it's like you have more resources available to you than what you might believe. Um, but if you're sarcastically turning your back on everything or if you're you know, in this place of like, well, that didn't work out before. And I, you know, honey badger's too old for this bullshit. Two, 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 two on the time. If you have those attitudes about you, then you won't see the opportunities for new ways of thinking. Right. And, and I think it's kind of like healing this need to be in a king of swords energy. If that's where you were, if you were in that like dedicated, you know, throne room, I'm hearing interesting. If you were in that particular throne room and you needed to, you know, sit upon that one, That's fine. Don't malign where you were, but understand that you can look up and around you and find new opportunities. Sometimes opportunities don't come in the form of like, you know, kick down the door, great things. Sometimes opportunities come in the form of thinking new thoughts that will open up other doors, right? It, it, it can be so unassuming. Um, I feel like something I want to do is to get a thesaurus and think about all of the different ways that we can use the word opportunity um, because it just, it needs, I feel like it needs to expand. It needs to expand to, because opportunity is like, what does that mean? I mean, it means something different for you, like for everybody, right? Um, For some people, it's relationship. (laughs) For other people, it's about money. For other people, it's about, you know, maybe family and childbirth. For other people, it's about enlightenment. For some people, it's about a stable home. For other people, it's about not doing that shit again, right? (laughs) Like it's, it's like it, opportunity means so many different things. So that's just my, uh, my little, I don't know. It's not so much a rant. I just need to look it up and think of different ways because of my word nerd, my inner word nerd. So on the six of swords and the six of wands, we have the seven of pentacles. So I feel like the ways that you used to recognize success on this path and the ways that you used to recognize, uh, where you were, 
maybe changing a little bit. Specifically, again, the sarcastic humor is very loud, but we go back to that Queen of Swords energy, right? You might feel impatient because you don't necessarily know how to anchor yourself in the moment without those things that you've had before. So I think this is a little bit about finding new ways to anchor yourself in the moment, um, to anchor yourself in the moment. Yeah, because see, if you're used to Ten of Wands energy, we had that in one of the last readings too. Um, but it's just like if you're used to a Ten of Wands energy, you really have to start to do right by yourself and let go of that being your metric of of something, you know, of of a way of understanding where you are. Um, you might feel a little bit impatient, but uh, that's okay. I think it's about alchemizing and integrating that energy. It's about alchemizing and integrating that energy chariot forward movement. Yep. So I do feel like there is forward movement. There is progress, maybe a little slow, but um, yeah, pay, Knight of Swords, page of, pay, Knight of Pentacles, page of Pentacles. I think it's moving a little bit slow, um, but you're getting there. And I think it's just about finding ways to encourage yourself on the journey, right? We all need that. Even if we say like, that sounds ridiculous. That's like baby stuff or like, you know, like things that you would do, like saying to yourself, you know, you're doing a great job. You really are. And don't lie to yourself either. Like if you, but like, you can't deny that you're doing a great job if you are right. Don't deny yourself that encouragement. And not all of us had family that would actively encourage us. So it can become an invitation when things get difficult to turn back within and say, you know what, you're doing amazing. You're doing the most with so little and you know, you're getting more information. You're getting more resources. You're getting more of the things that you need, but for now you're doing great. You know, because when we berate ourselves, they've done studies on this and specifically with uh, people with ADHD, uh, just neurodivergence in general. But um, I think in, in general, we can lose, I think it's something like up to 20 IQ points in the moment when we're shaming ourselves and we are, we either berate ourselves or make ourselves feel stupid or, you know, in those moments, we, we lose parts of our we lose access to specific parts of our brain that help us do stuff right that help us function that help us specifically with executive function which includes giddy up in your saddle which includes knowing what task to prioritize which includes all of these things so if you're berating yourself if you're sitting there saying you're an idiot i can't believe you couldn't figure this out i'm going to turn to sarcastic humor to cope with the way that happiness feels outside of me and absent from me because that feels better and at least people are laughing no at least we don't want to at least ourselves into a corner it's about encouraging yourself and encouraging others you know I'm saying like, oh, you know, again, like, oh, live in the dream. And I've done this too. And that's where it's like, I share this as an example of something that I have done myself, right? Um, and, and it just, it's like, why, why be sarcastic like that? Why not just show up in, in a place of joy? Um, if that's accessible and if that's what you actually want, right? Cause sometimes we need to feel miserable for a while. I feel like this is so good. Like there's so much healing available. <laughs> I just, this ace of cups, the moon and the star, like, I almost feel like you didn't, you couldn't see it necessarily. Maybe you couldn't see your own strength. That's part of why this was an antagonist position because you felt like you had to split it. So it's like, you couldn't be this full breadth and depth of, of a specific kind of fire. Um, but it's also like you, you felt like you couldn't be seen for the totality of you, right? Like this, both the innocent aspect and the part that is unwilling to roar, right? Um, yeah, so fascinating, but there's, there's new opportunities here. Um, I'm hearing communion. This reminds me of my first communion, <laughs> like that, the Eucharist and all of that stuff. So I, I think it could also just be a way that you're changing how you talk to spirit and engage with the energy that you consider to be creator or God, right? Um, I feel like that's kind of a shift here. It's a little bit of a shift. But that's where your hope lives. And if you couldn't find it, if it was under this moon, right? Um, maybe it's more that you were like keeping it there because it was safer that no one saw it because it feels dumb. It feels, it, you know, and honestly, like I'm going through this um, right now with certain situations where feeling hope, people would laugh if they, they, they heard hope when things are not necessarily going well on the outside, right? Because you have to turn something around for it to get there. So it's like going to driving school and imagine if the driving instructor was laughing at you and calling you stupid when you were trying to learn how to do a three-point turn, right? 
So instead of laughing at things, when we choose optimism and hope, um, understand that the reason why other people do that is because it's so unbearably under a moon for them that they can't reach it, nor do they want to access it. But don't let that be the thing that keeps you, that locks you out of your happiness, right? Because it's just perception in the end. It's just perception in the end. And one person's opinion should never dictate what's possible for you, right? People, you know, I saw, so there was something that came up on in like a Facebook memory or whatever, where, you know, it was the first day yesterday, four years ago, was the my first day of grad school. And I think about the impossibilities of that, right? Just the impossibilities were that I couldn't possibly go back. I had nearly been murdered in 2007. And then I was, you know, trying to make OSAP payments. And it just I was working for minimum wage, and trying to find housing and all of this stuff was happening. Um, And it seemed like an impossible dream, right? It seemed like an impossible dream to get a degree. uh, But it still happened. And I didn't really expect it. I didn't know what would come of it. I was just asked to do an interview for someone's research. And then that prof told me about the program. And they said, I really feel like you would be an amazing fit for it. You should totally look into it. They, They do... Uh, accept students well after the de- the deadline, which was February, right? And then I applied in July and I got in in August. So this to say, you know, if, if other people put their hopes or, or long held maybes under the moon and then call your optimism ridiculous or sickening or ill-placed or toxic, you know, we don't want to do toxic positivity where we're saying, oh, it's fine, it's fine. If you know it's not fine, choosing to be optimistic regardless is actually a strength because it's not just about getting through, it's getting to the other side of it. And then you're mobilizing resources, right? And just because people can't see all of it doesn't mean that you're not. So you have to be very firm with yourself and resist the urge to prove, resist the urge to show, because if you know right? You can be open to learning. But I think it's like, don't listen to other people who, you know, I <laughs> I was like this in 2014, 2015, um, kind of went through a dark night of the soul shortly thereafter. But you know, people used to laugh and say that I would have sunshine, unicorns and rainbows coming out of my ass, because it was just like, I was so like, always looking on for the silver lining, always looking on the bright side of things, right? Yes, this is happening. Yes, it needs to change. However, Think of all the things that I'm going to achieve after this or all the things that I'm learning from this. How is this bettering me? What are the silver linings here? And you don't have to refuse yourself the ability to feel things through it. But sometimes you really have to resist the the call of other people, right? Because you have your own calls from spirit, right? Call to adventure, call to your spiritual journey and your path. There are people, other people will call out to you in the night. I almost see this as being like a Marco Polo game, right? Well, I, I wish that there was another name for it, but um, it's just like, it's like where, you, you know, you call out and then someone answers, you call it and then you have to find, you get closer, but it's like, that's where it's almost like the negativity of other people. And it's, you just have to let that go, right? You really have to let that go. And it's almost like maybe that made you feel like a smart leader was one who was like focused on all the, the bad things that could happen because then it could prevent them. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Because you recognize, I think, on some level that it's just locking you out of your happiness. Like your back is always turned to it because it's always on the lookout for what's going to go wrong. It's always on the lookout. And that's where you're manifesting from. So no wonder if things have been difficult, that can be that can be part of why, right? Certainly things happen. And it's not, you know, (laughs) having been abused as a child, and then also, uh, you know, in a, a, a physically violent relationship, when I was much younger in my 20s, well, I should say late teens, even. Um, it's like, I, I can understand that things happen. And we can't say that you caused that because that's victim shaming. And it's it's not right. Um, what I'm talking about here, though, is if you refuse to give yourself the perspective enough to see the good, you will also refuse, you won't be able to see it, even if it shows up and knocks on your door and lays on the doorbell, because you're going to be looking for what's wrong. You're going to be looking for why that's that's not true, that couldn't happen, right? It took me, uh, it was um, three, 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 three on the time. It took me about three weeks before I applied to grad school, because I doubted that I would get in. I was like, oh, this is, uh, I don't even know. This feels ridiculous. It's silly. Why am I even, right? But then it, it happened. So, I I share that, I think, just because this moon card here is really, it's really calling to me in that it's like, you know, bookending 
uh, or sorry, it's in the middle of the bookends of an ace of cups and a star, which is healing and new opportunities that come from that. You may not be able to see the path clearly, but this also speaks a little bit to what other people may not be able to see as well. And and like you have to really detach from that and bring integration. Like you need to integrate this innocence, this childlike wonder with the part of you that has the strength to do anything, right? So let's, okay, miracles now. Let's pull from this deck here and see what spirit has got for us to close out this reading today. And that's the other thing I'm getting to that like other people may see the outer conditions, but they don't know what's going on on the inside. So don't let them tell you what's possible and what isn't. That's really the big lesson here too, right? In addition to the, the you know, the lesson of like learning to carry a pentacle and letting go of what you don't need to, what disconnects you, right? Um, yeah. Sleep is a spiritual practice. Could be a call to get some more rest. And also to watch how you, it's like sleep hygiene I'm hearing too. Yeah. Sleep hygiene. I make time to recharge my battery. The world needs my energetic light. So I make time to recharge my battery. The world needs my energetic light. I feel like there's a lot of light shining this week. Um, and not like shining a light on the bad. It's like you're shining your light in different ways. And I think it's like starting small. There's this little spark. There's like a spark. And I feel like it's like, like that's what it's going to start to, like there's this little spark. And it's, I feel like you're beginning to trust it. But I think first you had to detach from this King of Swords idea of of what leadership was supposed to be or look like um yeah respectability politics are a pain in the ass and when it comes to healing ourselves we really need to pull ourselves out of the idea that in order to be a specifically respectable leader like you can't be be optimistic be super optimistic be funny be engaged you can also be you know strategic and calculated in in what you do for yourself but it's like, I'm seeing this too. Like I let grace lead the way. Yeah. Take the first step and you'll be shown the next step. And the one after that, know that life will love you every step of the way. Like let grace lead, let grace lead, right? Let the part of you that understands what it means to be so humbled that you have not a lot of resources at the moment or wherever you are, but knowing that what you have in you can remake and rebuild and recreate or create or add on to or change or shift all of it. it. This is where you begin to use and integrate all of it. And incidentally, that's where you become a fucking emperor. That's where you step into emperor energy. That's where you start to activate that leadership right? And it's not, you know, you think about leadership and it's like, okay, well, give me a leadership position and I'll lead. No, 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 no. Leadership is also about putting all of these disparate pieces seemingly into a coherent structure that allows you to take the lead in your life, that allows you to take the next steps in your life, right? And we come to different places where we realize this and sometimes it takes us longer than others and that's fine. There's no definitive timeline of like, this is how you do it right. You have to do it by this time and this day and in this specific, no. That's not it at all. Um, and that, again, it's like, it's the kind of leader, right? King of Swords leader or, you know, other energies as well. And and that's where it it's, it's a different kind of leadership, right? I almost feel like it's a kind of disconnected leadership in the way it's showing up here. King of Swords and Queen of Swords, right? Uh, maybe there were ways that you needed to be calculated for a time. And that's okay because that's a strategic way to protect yourself if you've not healed something, right? That's what we turn to. Uh, but there's a more open-hearted approach and a more open-hearted leadership style available to you. So I think it's important to lean into that. This reading has been huge. I feel like there's so much that's been coming through. So thank you for watching thus far. Let's read this here. Celebrate life. We're going to close this out. Dearest, wonderful you, to help you manifest a life for the highest good, we invite you to examine your deepest desires. Imagine all your desires, no matter what kind, like magic seed pods in a basket, glowing with infinite potential. Look closely at each one. Are you afraid that some may bring you too much attention and invite negative reactions from others? This is the King of Swords in that Leo, right? Being seen. Six of Wands too. Um, 
Is change too daunting? Are you afraid to stretch and grow? Let yourself be led forward and let the seeds of positive intention take you uh, take to the wind. Your desires count and you are worthy of them. They are essential for co-creating your world. Did you ever consider that when a desire comes from deep within you, it might be spirit moving you to create something beautiful to share with others? Some desires are infused with miraculous powers to move the heart and influence the world in ways you can't possibly know. We know you and love you so deeply and are so happy to support you. Yeah, I think this is big. This kind of sums it up though, doesn't it? Some desires are infused with miraculous powers to move the heart and influence the world in ways you can't possibly know. And that's the healing, I think. That's the healing is letting that in, letting that in. So my friends, that is your daily creative reading for September 8th. I hope this resonated. If it did, give it a like and subscribe. I'd love to have you on the channel if you're not already. Uh, there are other ways you can connect with me on here if you so desire. But if this is where we part, <laughs> I hope that wherever this finds you on the time space continuum, morning, afternoon, or night, that it finds you very, very well, my friends. Take care.